This is East West Audio Body Shop with Dan Leonard in the East and George Whittem in the West. Now back to two characters that didn't have anything else better to do, Dan and George. I'm going to assume we're back on. We're back. Okay, it's just suddenly, boom, it was gone. I know, that was a quick, that was an abrupt uh, cut. Sorry about that. Yes, and of, unfortunately, um, the first don't, half of the show... Don't tell going anybody, to have, please. No, we have to. You have to commit it to memory. <sighs> I didn't record. I didn't hit record until the break just now. So. That's okay. The only important thing is our guest. Anyway. So that means all of you watching tonight oh, wow. got a one-of-a-kind uh, experience. So, Anywho. That, well, that sucks. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, but, yeah. hey, that's showbiz, kid. Well, you know what we'll do is we'll, on the show notes, um, we'll, we'll, put a, we'll put Dan's video in there so everybody else will be able to uh, benefit. Right. So that was, that was the most important part. So. Right. And links to all the other videos, too. Yep. Anyway, but he's standing by here in New York going, what are these idiots talking about? Blah, 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 let's, blah. <laughs> let's bring in our special guest tonight. This is a guy who's you know, very accomplished in the voice biz. And oh, uh, if, you. If, if, you, if you watch HBO at all or you know some of these great sports promos that are out there, this is the oh. guy that does those voices. And his name thank is you. Xavier Paul. Xavier, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. You guys are the best. I love this show so much. Because you get to the deep, you get to the deep dish of the voiceover industry. That's what I love about it. <laughs> yeah, this, the, the deep dish. Suddenly like we're it. a we're a pizza joint now. Hey, you I, are. hey, <laughs> man, we might work. We might use that. We might use that. That's true. We're the deep dish show with all the trimmings. <laughs> That's right. Anyway, Savy, now, now, you're you're not a name I think that people are familiar with, but that's just yeah. the way things are in the voice biz. Yeah. Uh, you know, we I mean, we all know who each other is in this business. Exactly. Great, great community, but, um, but yes, you, as I said, you you're doing a lot of stuff for for HBO. How did you get started, and and how did you get to where you are? Because you're oh, you just know, a, you're been. just a kid. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I look. I say to I say to people that I've been doing voiceovers for 25 years, and I really don't look any older than 25. Yet I always say the residual checks from voiceovers allows me to purchase the best moisturizer available on the market. <laughs> okay, that Michael Jackson formula. I'll take a whole truckload of that. Thank you. <laughs> Douse my entire body down with it and just moisturize between auditions. And uh, yeah, it's been fantastic. Yeah, and it has been. It has, I can't, it seems like it was just only yesterday that I was 15 years old and I walked into Dan Duckworth's voiceover studio here in New York, his company, Voiceovers Unlimited, the, at the time, the complete and only voiceover training facility dedicated to voiceover training in New York City. Okay. And learned the basics of voiceover. Okay. And back then, I remember one of the things we'd spend hours doing was listening to demos and understanding how demos are created, how the right sound and the right read is created, and the real nuts and bolts of not just getting voiceover jobs, which is what I think the industry is a little too preoccupied with these days, with yeah. the advent of Voice 1, 2, 3, and Voice 3, 4, 5, and all this. Yet, you know, Dan is, was interested in making sure all of us young students knew how to build a voiceover career. That's what he taught us, and that's what I've been able to do. Wow, that's, that, that's boy, you, you lucked out there. You walked into the right place at the right time. Okay, for sure. Timing for sure. is a lot and, of the business. <laughs> Now, I'd be remiss unless I requested for you to play some of my demos. What do you have? Play something. Play something. I've Let's got your voice. Because, you know, in the voiceover business, and in real life, people don't believe it's you until you actually play the demo. So do you have anything? Let's play. Yeah, I've got, I've got, uh, I've got your voiceover universe page open. So okay. everything I would need is probably in one place right there. So I am mm. pulling that up right now. So Wonderful. sorry. For and I sent Dan something I recorded just the other day. Another thing I always try to tell my colleagues and students is that you've got to stay hungry. Yeah, not totally. just in your, you know, twentieth month in voiceover, yet also in your twentieth year. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just the other day, I did something really, really cool and unique. I finally did my commercial tags demo. Oh no, kidding. Okay. Wow. This is a demo of only tags. 
this thing is going to knock the absolute socks off the industry. I've got people waiting for it. I've been pre-marketing it as well. You know, record labels, you know, they don't just wait for the album to drop before they start marketing the album. It's always coming soon, coming soon, coming soon. Well, we're voiceover people here. We're recording mm-hmm. artists. It's up to us to do the same thing. We don't have to just wait until our demos come out to say, hi, will you please take a listen? I mean, you know, it's about marketing here. It's about yeah. getting on the phone and saying, hey, in a month, you're going to be, this is what's going to be happening. And would you like to be on the list to be the first fan to get it? I'm looking at your list of uh, your, your demos on Cool Voice Radio Demos and, and uh, coolvoiceradio.com. Sorry about that. And uh-huh. you've got an incredible Great. list, and I can see you're just you're growing it and growing it because you can, you can have a lot of uh, demos that are shaped specifically to a specific client or genre. Um, off yeah. this list, you've got Buffalo Bills. You've got a trailer oh, demo. Oh, what? Well, he has to play the Buffalo Bills ones because right. I, are you a Buffalo Bills fan? Okay, I, go I'm, a, I'm in Buffalo. Where, right. where, where we're supposed to be. Yeah. Head coach Chan Gailey, the goal never changes. The bottom line in any year is to be a champion. It's going to take a lot of hard work. Keep playing, Chan Gailey. Come on, D, keep playing. And it takes the fans. The fans create the emotion of the game, and it really energizes our football team. Get your Bill season tickets now. Call 1 877 BB Ticks. That's 1 877 BB T I C K S. Buy online at buffalobills.com or visit the box office at Ralph Wilson Stadium and lead the charge. Man, you do lead a, the charge, guys. Yeah, man, you do a great chant. You do a great Chan Gailey there. Yeah, indeed. It was so good that Chan never heard it. <laughs> do, you, do you have a, Absolutely. Do you yeah. have a traditional mm-hmm. demo too? You know, where you cut together a bunch of stuff. Do you feel, feel like that's an important part of your promotional package? Oh, very much so. Particularly for commercials. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, and. I, again, come from, even though I'm a young guy, I come from a different era of voiceover where range essentially was what you wanted. You wanted to extract as much range out of your voice and career. Now, I don't know what's going on in the voiceover industry now where people are talking about, oh, you've got to be typecasted and branded and, and you know, just, you know, wear the same, you know, thing on every audition. I'm like, what? Who are you people? I mean, who, who are these aliens that have landed <laughs> and are teaching all these voiceover courses the past 10 years? I've never heard of these people. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know what they're talking about, and, and, right. and the students. They, I also cast as well, and when they come to my studio to audition, uh, you know, they're looking at the microphone like it's got three heads on it. I mean, <laughs> I'm like, you guys have been. You guys weren't trained. You guys were molested. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know, and I know who who's doing some of the molesting too. <laughs> so, uh, we will not oh, name names. We will not name names. No, no naming names. Yeah, don't don't go naming the perpetrators, right? Here, here, here's That's your commercial right. demo at uh, one ninety two. That's the name of it uh, at one ninety two. Good stuff. Thank here we go. Here it is. My maybe silence is the best maybe part of it's my career. Buffering, I don't know. <laughs> buffering, no hey. buffering. I guess good old fashioned buffering. Yeah, it's my Verizon yeah. FiOS uh, is not too fast today. I guess I don't know. Uh, yeah. All right, that one's being maybe it's the one ninety two. Maybe it's that one's being stubborn. How about uh, well, how, you know? What, play, could I may have a request? Yes, have, have my request. Sure, all right. We're taking request. One of my favorites. Play, play, play our trailers. Oh, absolutely. Trailers, yeah. trailers are always the fun. That's near the top. Here we go. Just when you thought there was no more room in hell, You're going straight to hell. there happens to be one extra seat. Help me, help me, help me. This summer, burn in hell. Hell bit. Rated NC 17. Under 17, <laughs> not admitted without parent. This summer, burn experience a story of honor, a story of struggle, a story of hope. From director Steven Spielberg, Conflict Vietnam, in theaters everywhere. We're going to bring some special kids into your home. Oh, stay back, kid! They're more menacing than Dennis, and they have better attitudes than Bart. Oh, no! It's stay back, kid! Monday, December 6th on Cinemax. The wait is over. Space HD. Coming July 1st. She had the voice of an angel and the soul of a survivor. How could we lose a rising star so soon? From the director of Dreamgirls, Fallen Angel, the true story of Aaliyah Dana Houghton. 
in theaters this summer. Nice. All right. That's Absolutely. trailer work. That's yeah, trailer work. it seems like trailers are what even the lay person thinks of when they think of voiceovers. It's like, oh, you're the voice guy on that trailer. It seems like many people don't realize that 90% of the voiceover industry are the voiceovers that we never hear. The books on tape or the, well, unless you're an app reader, the right. books on tape, the installations for museums, the industrial films and so forth, you know? Right, exactly. Well, let, let me ask you this. Now, now you've, you've got a lot of these clients. You've got a standard agent, I'm sure, and you, and you get business through that. But how do you, once you, you establish yourself with one client, how do you get repeat biz? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, isn't that just a magic question? It is. And repeat business really has to do with creating a value that goes beyond that one session for them, really. And I know for me, you see, I say to people, I didn't know anybody, and it's the truth, I didn't know anybody in the voiceover industry when I started. When I sent my demos out and I went into the interviews, they took one look at me and said, oh my God, we thought you were white. I'm sorry, this isn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I had the voiceover industry slammed the doors in my face hard for a good, good six years before you know, I finally, you know, kicked it open. <laughs> um, yeah. And when I did, I made sure that I was absolutely ready for not only for it to be kicked open, yet to really stay open. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned my technique uh, upwards, downwards, from the right to the left, backwards, hands tied by my, behind my back, thrown in a pool. I mean, it's just, you know, there's no way that I'm going to go into that booth and not nail that read. It's just absolutely impossible. <laughs> To have. I mean, you can say, I don't want to hire him, I don't want to book him because I just don't like him. But other than that, you're not going to not book me because I'm not delivering what you're looking for. Okay. And I think if you can bring that level of artistry and craft and technique to the game, uh, repeat business will be really the least of your worries. You see, that's the problem, again, with today's voiceover industry and training is that that kind of training and ability isn't around now. I mean, it's like, you know, only, only for guys that are like have a good 20 years in are, you know, can even understand what I'm really talking about right now. Most others are like, oh, well, isn't it just about, you know, oh, that read was pretty good. And, oh, well, you know, so-and-so knew my sister. And, oh, well, I've got a good agent. So, you know, that should be enough. And, you know, that whole mentality of thinking, which really doesn't have anything to do with real solid craft and ability. Sure, it's about yeah, having a nice sounding voice, no more, no less than having a nice looking body if you're a runway model, right? right. Yeah, I always say there's a huge difference between talent and developed talent. Developed talent can create a career, whereas I feel talent is kind of a given and you know, you can get a couple of jobs with it, yet, you know yeah. it's really gonna sustain you for the long haul. Yeah. That's well, true. Yeah, go ahead, Dan. No, no, go ahead. Your question. Now, you, you touched mm -hmm. on, you did touch on the hot button of race. And I know yeah. a big part of voiceover marketing, a lot of people recommend not using your picture in your promotional material because people make an immediate judgment on what the product is going to be based on your picture, whether it be because you're a male or female or because you have exactly. a mustache or because you're black or white. And you know, it's, exactly. it's really it comes down to your acting ability. So, I mean, would you agree that keeping your picture away from the website is an important part of marketing yourself? Well, you see, okay, let me, I would say, I would rephrase that to an important part of marketing yourself is understanding how the visual comes into play and how it can come into play to work for you. Yeah. Um, and if that involves at certain occasions excluding the visual or including it at a certain well-timed point, then, then by all means do so. Uh, okay, so here in New York City, uh, my estimation that has been confirmed by a lot of my industry colleagues is that a good 60 percent, 60 to 70 percent of the casting directors that are casting on camera, casting directors, are also casting on voiceover. Mm -hmm. So they know what the talent looks like if okay. they also do voiceover and they do on camera. And that's not a hindrance. That, that can actually be a compliment. It's like they understand that clients want a certain uh, realism when it even comes to casting certain voiceover spots if they're national spots because many times the same on-camera talent in the spot will also 
do the voiceover for that spot. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there does need to be a certain continuity there, and and which the visual is informed by. So it, so the, I don't believe in the total divorce. Like, no, you can look like you know. It's not all about completely negating the visual. It's understanding how it can factor in, and, and, and on what occasions is it irrelevant, and on what occasions is it relevant, and keeping that relevance in perspective. Right. So if a spec comes through and it's it says, you know what, ethnicity not important. And you have the agent or casting director refusing to bring in a cross section of talent. Well, then that's a problem, right? Right. Right. Absolutely. Uh, or, or, or gender not important, and the agent just wants to send guys up on the the read and not send it to any female talent. Okay, then that's a problem. If you're a talent, then you know you need to find some more open minded agents who are going right. to be creative with uh, the casting. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So it's just knowing the context. And not, not to be corny, but it's not a black or white issue. It's knowing it's a, it's a gray area. You have to understand. Yeah, exactly. Not because I tell you, this again, again, this was a tough one for me to really come to terms with. I had to really educate myself more about the business, educate myself more about what really makes a good voiceover talent, a good voiceover talent. Okay. Uh, in retrospect, I realize it has a lot to do with what makes a good actor a good actor. A good actor is going to first, you've got to know who you are and accept who you are, accept who I am as an Afro-American male who, who has a wide range and a wide global sensibility on a variety of things and, and can speak on a wide variety of topics. Now, from a marketing point of view, it's up to me to make sure it's my responsibility yeah. to make sure that the buyers, uh, from a global point of view, know where to find me right 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 okay yeah well that's that's a good perspective i mean people need to hear that because it's so easy to feel like you're going to get pigeonholed you yeah. know if, if you're just being yourself <laughs> you know indeed 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 i mean i think the pigeonholing process it seems to be in almost every business particularly with voiceovers yeah i mean let's face it we are in you know, advertising uses certain aspects of the superficiality of the American public to its advantage. So it's probably one of the reasons why a lot of the sounds we hear in voiceover, certain voices have certain built-in qualities that lend themselves to advertising for certain products. If you have a really high, upbeat, saccharine, fun-sounding voice, then you're great for certain kinds of trucks or Saturday morning TV. Right. You know, if you're deep and dark and mysterious, then you're good for, you know, body bar where it's just really cool and sensual. You know, at the same time, if you understand how to create those reads, then your voice can be pretty neutral like mine and do a wide range of reads because they can be attached to the way you read something and book you for the job and not be so much into your natural speaking voice or they could be really attached to your natural speaking voice and not so crazy about the way you read the spot. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Xavier, you know, you you're 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 a busy guy obviously. And one of the things that I know that you're you're probably doing is uh, you you probably spend some time uh talking uh with a lot of people in the community about maintaining their rates or what their rate structure should be like. How how are, how are you dealing with that? You know, more and more people that I talk with in the voiceover industry now are just so scared about so much, you know, the industry changes, the online casting services, the merger of the unions. What is this going to mean for the future? Uh, there's a lot of unknowns. And so voiceover talent now, I find, are for the most part, pretty, pretty scared and not really feeling all that confident about just how integral they are to the entire industry. And I think producers can smell that a mile away like a shark smells a paper cut, you know, in a in a pool somewhere, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, smelling that blood, and it's you know they hone right in, right for the juggler, and it's like, well, you know, you sound really good, but <laughs> we've only got twenty five dollars for this project. But you know what? Do this for us this time, and just around the corner, we've got some major things coming up. Oh we, boy! We promise, it, it, it's just going to turn around, or you know, and I, I know we're a major brand with franchises all over the globe, but we only have a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> for this brand video. Yeah, and there's and more coming if you would do this one. This is, is absolutely, of course there's more coming. And and don't worry about it. It's even though it's like a fifty page script at aerial point like, you know, ten, 
uh, and we're only paying you per finished uh, per finished hour and minute, uh, and you're going to get your check maybe 120 days after the fact. Please be aware that you know this is just you know you, you'll get it all in the back end. So you know, and, and this is the kind of thing that can happen right. if you're not really confident about who you are, what you bring to the table, real knowledge of how relevant you are to the industry, so that you can hold firm to rates that are 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 real rates that are reflective of your talent and also realistic for you to cover your overhead. I mean, as voiceover talent, we're essentially oh, yeah. we're freelance people. We work. We don't take holidays. There's no insurance. I mean, it's a seat of your pants operation. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yep. I mean, and, and and these rates have to reflect that. Yeah. To think yeah. that people would want to come back, they, they they to think you would want repeat business from a company that's underpaying you. Like there's more to come. Believe me, there's more. Oh, oh, at that rate, thanks. You know, yeah, really. Yeah, somewhere well, else. Yeah, you know, I've always gone by the adage: the people that pay the least are always the most demanding, too. <laughs> that's and, true. I mean, I mean, that's I mean, that's that's a universal in there. So if somebody's trying to really lowball you and really trying to not give you what you think you deserve, it's like. <laughs> I'll see you later. And then, of course, the phone rings half an hour later. Okay, we'll give you what you want. Okay, yes, but I want it up front. Yeah. So, and that's, yeah. You've got to have the confidence to do it. Clearly, clearly, clearly. Now, you've got some, you've got some classes you're teaching, too? Oh, thanks so much for mentioning that. Oh, Absolutely. my pleasure. <laughs> and, yeah, I know that it's, it's so important to get the word out and make sure that people know where to find you. And among the multitude of classes that are out here, I believe what makes me different, and I've actually been able to prove what makes me different, is that I'm not selling people the voiceover dream. I'm giving them the voiceover reality. How can I Good. do that? Well, because I'm actually experiencing the reality that I'm giving them. I don't really know if there's any other better way to do that. It's your reality, yeah. Them. That's right. I, I just... You know, I show them just how I've created a career that I can rely on, and I believe that's really the key. In an industry that there's so few things to rely on, I believe that after all the blood, sweat, and tears, create for yourself a career that you can rely on, yet it's going to take the total package, craft, technique, business know-how, the ability to negotiate, the ability to make sure that all of your auditions sent via MP3 are absolutely top-notch with reads that are nailed that really put you in the top percentile, the ability to conduct a recording session to make your clients feel that, oh, my God, it was a huge mistake that we haven't used you sooner, and we're going to make up for that mistake by constantly calling you again, okay? The ability to stay in touch with the contacts that you've made and the new contacts that you make in a way that is appropriate and uh, timely. Yeah. So I cover all of these things, really how to build your business as a voiceover person, how to market in unique and innovative ways to find and take advantage of the emerging markets that are happening right now. And as a voiceover manager and casting director, I'm wearing a variety of hats. What I do is, as the result of people studying with me, I plug them in to my actual work and projects. As agenda-driven as it is, I think that's an incentive for people because people want to know, wow, am I going to – is this working for me? I mean, did I make the right choice? And I can say to them, yes. That's great. I Excellent. mean, that's a good angle to work from. I mean, there's – people need to learn the business. If there's anything that I'm really mad at I did not learn in college – and, you know, much earlier on in my career was the business side of things. And so it's really valuable material. Is this something that you teach in person in New York or are you doing these on the web yet? Or how do you, how do we get, uh, how do people well, get? It started out and it is right now continuing in New York with groups and we're expanding with webinars and teleseminars. Coming up on April 23rd, we're doing one of my favorite topics, how to get your voiceover demo produced correctly. Mm-hmm how to get it done the right way, the competitive way, the way that makes the investment that you make time-wise and financially absolutely worth it. And that's happening on April 23rd from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can go to yeah. xtentertainmentgroup.com. And I don't know, Dan, could you put that link that I sent you up in the chat room or, or should I just mention the website again right now? I'll we, type we it up. He'll t George will type it right into the chat room right now. So it's thanks uh, so much. It's uh, yeah, X the of course www.xtentertainmentgroup.com, and that's forward slash seminars. 
Yeah. All right. XTEntertainmentGroup.com forward slash seminars. And on when they click on that link, they can sign up and register. And what we're doing is that it's live and it's also a teleseminar and webinar. So when people register, I'll send them the teleseminar codes and they'll be able to call right up for the for the presentation on the 23rd. And we're still working out the kinks for the webinar right now. We'll be able to send those details right after they register as well. The right. price is the same for the webinar, whatever they, you know, the price is the same. Excellent. Excellent. All right. You're planning on coming uh, to California for Voice 2012? I think you'd I be... I certainly am. I want to begin expanding more and more out to the L.A. area, shaking up some things with some agents that I have out there. Whenever I'm in L.A., I do find myself auditioning quite a bit. I've become a little mm -hmm. spoiled here in New York. It can happen. I've accomplished quite a bit with the Metro card. Excellent. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you out there. Xavier, it's been a thrill having you on here this tonight, and you've got really given good. us Please some... do it again. My apologies for not being uh, video... Uh, <laughs> video friendly. Yet, uh, how about how about having me on in in a, uh, maybe in another few months, and by then I'll be all videoed up. That'll no be great. Looking forward to it. Thanks, guys. All right, you take care, Bye. Xavier Paul, our guest tonight at East West Audio Body Shop. Lots of great material there for you guys. We try to bring you the best stuff here, so uh, we'll try and bring some more of this your way in the following week, coming weeks. We've got a lot of interesting people coming up, actually. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Also, we've got the pictures of the week from somebody's studio. I'm looking forward to this. I don't good. think I've seen this one. So, I haven't either. Uh, I haven't so, either until I uh, brought up the pictures just now. So this is a whole... Oh, oh you haven't even seen them yet. Well, <laughs> no, I just brought up the presentation. I was like, all right, there we go. All right. <laughs> okay, now you're dragging me off to the side here. And uh, well, Okay, anyway. Because you've got to get Don't me Don't look here. at the show, Dan. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I know. You have to know what's going on. So I have to have a basic idea what's going on. <laughs> exactly. I know. But I'm not listening. I'm just watching. Right, right. And anyway, um, but we've got to get into talking about somebody who is one of our favorite people. Our sponsor, Harlan Hogan, H2 to those of us who know him, and his fabulous website for getting the best stuff for voiceover. Because as we always say, keep it simple. Harlan makes it simple by simply going over to voiceoveressentials.com get that beautiful page up there it george up there right now and i'm uh, right. dropping it in right now okay so let's let's talk about what he what he's got uh you know he's got the 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 porta booth pro and the vo 1a i've been recommending this to people it's a great mic a lot of people are saying is it good for women sounds great for for the gals it really really does oh that sounds so sexist oh god i can't i can't believe i just said that oh, the gals but the gals boy i, I just Sent myself back to 1968 there. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, actually, he, uh, there was an interesting thing that uh, Harlan mentioned about the, the Porta booth. It actually, he got a tremendous number of orders from TED, um, the TED Network. If you, guys, if you guys haven't caught TED yet, it's awesome. It is a free network with thousands of hours of lecture. And these, these conferences are incredible. I mean, there's so much going on. And... There's topics ranging from, you know, a malaria outbreak to interpretive dance. I mean, it's it's everything is in this thing. But anyway, he sold a whole slew of these things to TED Conference, and he was really, really, really proud of that. I mean, that's that's a pretty ringing endorsement. I mean, you have to if you had never seen the TED show, go to TED.com, watch, you know, look for some topics of interest and check it out. You'll see the 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 level of production that they do. I mean, it's remarkable. Um, but uh, sort of like sort of like what we do here. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> they make lots of mistakes, and you know they don't have it. No, uh, no, the, no. Ted is quite remarkable uh, in in the terms of the quiet quality of uh, speakers they have on there. You know, people that you might have heard of, like Bill Gates. Uh, you know, things like that come on to speak at Ted. So, anywho, he's really proud of that. He, I know, he wanted us to mention that. So, congratulations on you know making Absolutely. a great client with Ted. That's right. Uh, so go over there, voiceoveressentials.com, the easiest place to get the stuff you need, because it, as Garrison Keeler says, if he doesn't have it, you probably don't need it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty true. I mean, he, true. he really hasn't narrowed down to the, to the, to the bare basics, the essentials. That's the name. Essentials. That's, right. yeah, that's why it's called voiceover essentials. Thank you, Harlan. You're a great guy. Thanks, Harlan. All right. Well, let's move on to our final our final breaths here for this week. 
All right, we've got uh, we've got somebody's studio this week. Yes, uh, we do. Who do we have here? We have. Let me find it. I've got seventeen windows open here. Let me find the right one. And oh, it got buried. Oh, it got buried. It's in there somewhere. <laughs> Just to start moving some of the stuff aside. It'll yeah. all... I, I'm digging through the uh, records here. Here we go. And getting closer. From a fellow named Emil. Emil. Oh, Emil. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. He he sent this thing in a little while ago, and I've been wanting to put it up, but I just it kept floating to the bottom. So I made sure that I'd grab it before it went too much further down. So he not only did he send audio samples, but he also sent a PowerPoint presentation of his Wow. Booth. So I figured if he went through the effort to put this together, we might as well, sh- well share it with you guys. So let's, let's see what he's got. Let me pop it open. I had to open it with Quick View. I couldn't open it with PowerPoint because uh, for some reason on this user account, it's not letting me open it. Huh. And it's not letting me open it with uh, Quick View either. This is one of those nights <laughs> where you test everything, it's working fine, and then when you're having to do it in the moment, you get that, the spinning gear of of death. Well, well it's not the spinning gear of death. It's the spinning gear of be oh, patient. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, the patient oh, gear. Be- there we go. All right. There we go. Now let me resize it because it's way too big. Okay. There we go. Okay. Ah, so booth it's champion. Called, booth champion. VO mm. Superhero, the swing booth. Okay. Let's see what this is all about. The setting. There's probably music going with this too, and I apologize if he has music and we're not hearing it because nice house. Like I said, I couldn't uh, actually open the PowerPoint on this uh, particular setup. But there is the setting. Here is the layout. So that's pretty cool. We don't often get to see a sort of a, a, a plan view of the uh, of the it's like a walkthrough. Layout. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then. Uh, there is the actual space. And it looks like a very comfortable space to work in. He's got a laptop over the side, microphone. Now, he has his microphone standing on the desk, which I know is something we talk about as often not a good idea, but as long as that desk doesn't transmit any vibration into the mic, you know, he'll be in good shape. Yeah. I, what do you think, Dan? Well, I, I, I you know, if you put a mic stand on a desk... It's going to cause a problem. The men and women oh, of the U.S. Sample. Army are the best trained, most dedicated, and most respected soldiers in the world. They face enormous challenges, but are afforded opportunities that serve them for the rest of their lives. Within this, okay, On yeah. a typical weekday morning, Leon Moores leaves home in the uniform of a colonel in the Army's medical service. Moments later, his wife Lisa does the same. Their nearly identical uniforms and his and hers roadsters silently hint at the manner in which the couple approaches their careers and their lives with dedication and flair. You know what, Dan? I can actually hear the reflection off the desktop. Absolutely. I can hear it too. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not hearing things. I, it's, everything is really in check. He's the, there's no bass resonance that I can hear. No, you know, muddy, low end, uh, no resonance. But I can hear that telltale desktop reflection. It's yeah, it it man. sounds something like that essentially. Well, <laughs> when you when you start when you when you have a hard surface underneath your microphone. Well, that's a bad mic to demo with because that mic really rejects that really really well. All right, all right, we'll do it from the front then. Yeah, when you that. talk like when you when you talk at it like that, it's going to sound like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I mean I run into this with people all the time. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, today somebody was like, you know, uh. Uh, how do I set it up so there? You know, I, I have my copy is on top of the mic. We'll put your copy underneath the mic. Exactly. Well, let's yeah. move on because I, I think there's more to the story, and we're not really sharing everything. So he's yeah. trying to demonstrate the swing booth. So what we were hearing may not have been the mic on the desktop. So here's the the okay. swing booth in action. Uh, so it looks like it's a standing. Oh, I see. It's a floor standing based wall set that can be moved on wheels. That's pretty cool. Um, he's going to have a cloud based over the top of the booth. Okay, so here's another side view of the booth or an elevation view. All right. And there's a back view showing like the positioning of the paneling and everything. So, okay, so he has a booth that can be put away and deployed. And oh, there we go. Here's a better shot that really shows like all the bits and pieces in place. 
Ah, that's much better. So you okay. can zoom in on some of those. Oh, cool. So it, it's a setup where you can basically change the positioning of all the panels separately because everything is on wheels and everything's movable. I yeah, like that. that's yeah, that's called dear, you're gonna have to clean this up. Yeah. <laughs> it can't be it can't be permanent. You've got to move it. Yeah. Sometimes the, the wife doesn't want it here. So exactly. Sometimes you gotta have something that's in fl a flexible in nature. So when it's freestanding and collapsed, it looks like that. And when the the sides are swung around him, creating the booth, it looks like that's really cool. Yeah. That's kind of a take on that booth I made a while ago for Anna Lux that was matted in the corner and had these swinging panels on it. Oh, right, right. Yeah. We use that picture a lot because <laughs> <laughs> you're standing in the middle. Of yeah, it. I know. Well, it, it, that was a, you know, that was just sort of like solving a problem. And doing it in a clever way and getting getting a little bit of time to do it right. You know, sometimes you have to do these things really quickly and we don't get to be that creative. But getting right. a little bit of time and a little, you know, help with from the client, you know, you can you can create some really unique situations. But uh, this is a really clever design. Yep. Really good job, Emil. Thanks, Thanks for Samuel. sharing Very nice. Yeah, it's awesome. All right. So if you if you want to show us your studio, and heck, we've seen some fascinating ones. There was the one with the colored lights. I'm still trying to figure that one out. Uh -huh. uh, this this one's unique. That's and he's and he did it in an attic too. You can see that it was in an attic. So it's like really yeah. out of the way. So his wife was like, "Get it out of here and in the attic." And I don't want to see it up there either. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so um, thank you for that one, Emil. We really appreciate that. And uh, we want more. Keep sending them in. Yeah. Yeah. Every one of you. Every one of you that's sitting in there in that chat room, we want to see pictures of your studio. Absolutely. Now, I, I want to see them in our mailbox tomorrow morning. That's an assignment. <laughs> that's an assignment. Exactly. That's right. And we want well, your ideas for guests. We want your ideas for topics. Tips Look, of the week. It's your anything. show. You know, we're, we're, we're having fun getting to talk about whatever we want to talk about. But uh, That's right. We need, you know, more, more fuel. Once in a while, we start going, gosh, didn't well, we talk didn't about we talk everything about already? That. Yeah. Didn't we cover everything? <laughs> so... Keep Fortunately, technology marches on, you yeah. know, you know, like, so when, 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 when the Epigee mic came out, oh, look, technological advance, right. uh, you know, and then, you know, and then you can look at, you know, oh, look at technologically advanced ribbon mics. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Actually, I, I want to go see, um, the AEA West Dooley, uh, ribbon mic factory. It's in, it's in the I LA do, area. I do too. And, uh, I met them, I met, met Wes at the NAMM show. And I've yet to, I need to, I need to share that interview. I, I he, he t went on for a long time, but I got a little bit of interesting uh, words from Wes from the show, but they did say, if you want to ever come in, um, that I could do a little tour and do it and, you know, I'll shoot a little video. So Absolutely. Yeah. that's I, something you know, to, yeah, my, my, my next mic on my, on my list is going to be the, the R440, you know, mm. unless I can find a real 44 out there in the, on the net somewhere. And there's mm. still plenty of them out. See, they built things to last RCA did back oh, in, yeah. the, you know, I mean, I mean, look at this thing. I mean, this body's from 1938 and I love the design that art deco looking. Yeah, it really is kind really of an cool. art deco. Yeah. I, I, I love this mic and I think I'm going to use it more often now. You know, and again, it's it's great. Like if you're doing, you know, if you have to do something historical, you know, December seventh, nineteen forty one. The um, thing is, is like it, it sounds very full range. It doesn't have that, rah, 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 you know, narrow nasal sound. It actually sounds well, really well. Weird. That's that's because they would be talking way off axis on these things. You know, right, then it would right. be you know, if the president was talking on a ribbon mic, it'd be December seventh, nineteen forty one. Right. Then it's then it sounds a little bit more. We're using a little bit more. Ribbon microphones have a, a very strong proximity effect. But here's the other cool thing. You can talk into this side, and you can talk into this side, and it doesn't make any difference. Yeah, I know. It's really, you got to have a well-designed studio to use them because you have to have the back side of the mic be well, you know, absorbing as well. That's right. But um, they really do reject a ton of noise from the side. So they're really interesting mics. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad I got to play with this one tonight. Yeah. And, and we're glad we got to play with you guys tonight. Thanks now, for next week, do we have anybody scheduled for next week? I know I have a couple of people lined up. I've got in, all these people May. floating, you know, that, that no, no committals yet. So uh, we're going to rattle some cages and get somebody locked in because both Dan and I have a list of people we're, we're interested in coming on. So I've talked to Bill Ratner. I know he'd like to be on. I just have to. Oh, lock we'd him love to down. have Bill on. Right. Uh, you know, uh, I've um, Hillary Huber. 
I'd like I, to get her on. I know she, I know when I mentioned when I was at her studio, she mentioned she might like to be able to do it sometime. So yeah. um I, but, I've got an I've got my ear, nose, and throat doctor is gonna come on. He's gonna talk to us a little bit about nasal care. Hey, I, it's relevant. Yeah, but he's also an opera singer too. It's really cool. Great guy. That actually is really cool. Yeah, he actually saved my life, so I gotta, you know, I, I sort of owe him anyway. And he wants to get into voiceover. I want to do medical narrations, Dan. What ear, nose, and throat biz a little slow this week or something? <laughs> <laughs> I want to make real money. I want to be in voiceover. Screw this yes. uh, specialist uh, thing, you know? Oh, jeez, <laughs> right? <laughs> guys, guys installed an awful lot of tubes in my kids' ears, so oh, uh, I, I, I got to trust this guy. <laughs> anyway, and so, and if you have any suggestions for anybody, I mean, we took that poll a while ago and bow on that, but there were a lot of people who finished second. We want to get them in there yep. too, but we'll tell them that they Harlan were honorable Hogan. mention. Harlan, we got to get Harlan back on again, oh, and totally. uh, you know, and a lot of other great people. See, what's this is one of the things I wanted to hit on this week before we before we signed off tonight there are an awful lot of people doing what we do if you haven't noticed oh yeah if you haven't noticed <laughs> there's a couple other shows out there now yeah i mean there's a couple other shows there's a lot of other people doing voiceover though is what i mean i mean it's like you oh, on I, Facebook. I, thought you, I thought you're talking yeah, about other I mean, shows yeah, i mean there's, there's a lot of people doing trying to copy what we're doing or at least trying to do, show file fed their niche yeah do their own version yeah that's right. You know, I mean, they can't do what we do and we can't do what they do. Right. Uh, I don't think. Anyway, but uh, there's a lot of people out there doing voiceover, a lot of new people, and they need to be tuning in here. So if you know anybody that's, you know, you don't want them to succeed, make sure they tune in here and <laughs> won't be sure to send them in the wrong direction. Right. No, we wouldn't do that. No, no we we're, never not, do. we're not about that at all. We're here to help you out. We're here to help you with your studios. Most of you already know that, but if you're if you're new to the show, uh, you know, join it and you know, go to our websites. Uh, with me, it's homevoiceoverstudio.com and if you want to drop off a sample so I can analyze your audio and see if you need some help with it there's a specimen cup at the bottom of the front page Home, homevoiceoverstudio.com and with me and, it's vostudiotech.com and at the top there's a Dropbox link and same thing you can pit Dan and I against each other see if we uh, give the same advice you know <laughs> we always do we generally do we generally and are we in lockstep on a lot of stuff that's right. And we generally consult with each other. So listen to this crappy mic. What was that one last week? There's like, there was a hole in, in somewhere in the frequency of this mic. I'm like, is that a bad mic? <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah. That was like, that was, that was a bad mic. Yeah. No, we do bounce stuff off of each other. We learn from each other. So yeah. when you hire one of us, you really get the benefit of both of our knowledge is kind of bundled in. So that's you true. can't lose. You can't lose. You're not going to lose with us. You can't so, lose. Any, and you can't lose by tuning into us every week. Nine o'clock here in the East and six out here in the West. And uh, I'm Dan Leonard here in the East. And I'm George when I'm here in the West. And together we are East, East West, West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. Everybody, you have yourself a fabulous week. We'll see you next Sunday. And make sure you exit through the gift shop. Shop.ewabs.com. That's, right. oh, oh, that's right. The eWab Shop Shop. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have a great one. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.